as well as um, throughout New York City and all around uh, from the Middle East to South America and Central America. So I'm so excited to have you on this webinar and we are going to get started. So, so to begin, all right, we're going to go to the slides and Full screen mode. All right. So again, welcome to How to Create Your Legacy, this A Small World webinar. And I'd like to begin with a thought. And the thought is, you are more than your money. So here we have a funny cartoon. And the cartoon is, uh, it reads, money isn't everything, but it sure keeps the kids in touch. For any parents out there, I'm sure that they can find a little bit of humor in this uh, regarding how many of us view money today. Uh, some of us even know the uh, scriptural joke that it's not uh, the love of money. I'm sorry, it's not money that is the root of all evil, but rather the love of money. So this is a little humor to start off this webinar. So, um, so to continue, my name is Angelina Carlton. It's very nice to meet you. I'm glad that you could join today. And I'd like this very much to be a discussion so please add your questions uh, at any time into the chat box, and this can be as interactive as possible. So who am I? So to break the ice a little bit, I am the founder of Legacy Planning. We are a boutique advisory and coaching firm out of Beverly Hills, and we offer all the support you need to complete your legacy. So most leaders, this is our mission statement, receive enormous support in growing their professional goals while they have little to no support to grow their bigger vision or dreams. At Legacy Planning, we guide clients for 12 months to move them from concept to completion. When clients retain us, we increase their wealth by aligning their values and developing their focus so their legacy can become a reality. Legacy Planning started in 2014, and we've had over 500 sessions online, both individual as well as group. Um, I am a Penn State graduate, as well as a um, graduate of the Coactive Training Institute. Um, so that's just a little bit about myself. Um, so you might ask, you know, who am I though as a person? And I think this is a very important question in this day and age because we are more than our labels as well as our resumes or our portfolios. So this slide is particularly fun for me because about five years ago, I began my own, what I would call hero's journey in exploring my legacy. I am a 13th generation American with my paternal roots back to England recorded to the year 1066 AD. Um, and I also have other roots on my mother's side to South Korea. I had the pleasure of traveling around the world growing up and that's a picture of me on the camel while my family lived in Izmir, Turkey in the 1980s. So what fun it was to travel around the world and to see Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and then to return to North America and um, I hope in terms of my legacy that I can carry on the values of both sides of my family. And it's been such a joy to learn also what those core values are on both sides. So to continue on, I'd like to thank you again for joining us on this webinar. So I'm going to begin with eight member feedback uh, quotes uh, in, in terms of a survey that I sent out. Then we'll move on to two case studies about two cities as mentioned in the invite, the invitation to this webinar. And finally, three tips on how best to create your legacy outside of just the typical definition of money and property. So the concept that I would like to bring up today or the idea that I would like to defend is you are more than your money. And I think that this is very important in today's day and age because we have so many choices um, and especially with the members in A Small World, there is more access to resources as well as influence and in how we as leaders can not just impact the next generation, but also the communities that are around us. So if I can leave you with one thought out of today's webinar, it is you are more than your money. So to begin, uh, outside of the concept that I'd like to defend, um, I asked two very important questions, and I'm going to cover eight in the beginning. And if there's no um, uh, Q and A at the very end, I will finish out with the seven remaining member insights. So the two questions I asked is, what does the word legacy personally mean to you? And what would you like to contribute? 
So those were the two main questions. And I tried to send it out to as many of the members ahead of this webinar as I could. So we're gonna begin with the first member's feedback that she provided. And I, I wanna provide this also as a little bit of background, not just to show the genius within the members of A Small World and the community, but also for someone to have the courage to move forward with their legacy, to let them know that they're not alone. And also I, I am highlighting uh, these member insights to get your creative juices flowing, also to get you to think, um, but most of all, to let you know that you're not alone for the ideas that you have. Because many times legacy is viewed as if we put our name onto a museum, a stadium, a library, and so forth. So we're gonna commence with this first slide. So uh, to this member, legacy means what she will leave behind. And in her personal experiences of traveling around the world, she experienced what it was to land at an airport. And many times the taxi is the first point of contact. And not only is it the first point of contact and what makes us feel safe in a new city, but it is also um, represented, the taxi driver is representative of you know, what that community or what that city is all about. So her hope is to create a program to better educate taxi drivers so that they can guide you know, their client who's in the backseat of their taxi better for the overall travel experience but also the idea of making English a universal language around the globe as a second language to the signs to have something that is um, certain. So as much fun as it is to travel to a brand new city, uh, it can also bring many surprises uh, to the unknown. So my question, uh, and I'd like you know anyone that would like to add uh, their input in the chat box. Uh, my question here for this slide is, have you ever felt the same way? and let me know what resonates with you. And so here, the second slide, this second member provided their thoughts as to what legacy personally means to them. And I'm gonna try and go through these first eight slides quickly to get to the two case studies, but I, I wanted this again to kind of set a feel for what this audience, how they perceive and view legacy and also what they would like to contribute. So this member articulated that legacy for them is making a change for the better, particularly how they connect with others. And what I appreciated so much about this member's insights is that he viewed it from both the lens of financial uh, uh, contribution or the financial succession that will take place within his family lineage, but also the spiritual side, understanding the value of kindness, how to live that in their life, how to exemplify it and how to make it meaningful. So it is not, again, just about the money. And also, um, what I also appreciated that he had articulated what his grandparents contributed to him um, and what he can contribute or what he can credit his grandparents with. Um, many times we talk about in coaching, uh, our head start is our head start. And anyone who has been born um, with their grandparents' contribution to guiding their life, as well as guiding their parents' life, knows the difference that it makes in the support that they receive as they grow up and the influences they have as they have to make decisions, not just about their legacy, but also just in understanding how to handle the many difficulties of life. So my question with this slide is, did you discover a value from your parent or your grandparent after they passed on? Perhaps it is kindness, but perhaps it is something else. And please feel free to add it in the chat. I am not seeing the chat answers this moment, but the moderator is, and she will share it. Uh, towards the end. And again, it's to get your creative ideas flowing regarding other members and their experiences. So this third slide um, talks about that legacy is what you leave behind you that was not there before. This particular member is very conscientious of her carbon footprint, the environmental impact that she makes as a consumer, as well as which brands that she supports. And so some of us can view legacy as maybe too far away from us, maybe it is too big. And at the same time, we can vote with our pocketbook. We can choose the companies that we feel are stewarding the resources of this earth. And also just to be very aware of, you know, what we take from this planet as well as what we choose to give back. You know, and maybe that is even donating funds to plant trees. It's, it's different for each of us, but one thing that we all share in perhaps what feels like a divided world today is we are all members of the human race and we all do share this magnificent planet called Earth. So on to the next slide. This fourth member shared their thoughts 
that legacy is how you live your life as well as what you leave behind. And one thing that I find so unique about this is, oh, I think I have something in the chat window. Let's see how I can access it. Oh, um, okay, as I'm still figuring out how to use Zoom. Okay, let's see. All right, I think that, um, how do I act? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yep. Yeah. All right. I see something in the chat. Somebody wanted to add from my grandfather. I received the legacy of kindness and righteousness. Um, okay. I wonder how I can have both the screen as well as the chat in place. Okay. I will just go back to a full screen. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah, for your thoughts. And I will just go back to full screen. Um, so for this slide, I wanted to highlight that this individual both looked at their influence at their workplace. You know, were they a fair manager? And when we look at the statistics of the number, at least in North America, the number of employees that feel bullied in the workplace, and the workplace is definitely a space that we spend enormous amount of our time in our life. So what I found so beautiful about this statement was not only did he think about who he was as a manager, professionally speaking, but also that he is in real time recording a digital record of books and podcasts for others to share in. So I would like to quote him when he says, what I would like to contribute is to show people that it is how you live your life and how you have treated others is how you will be remembered. I found that to be incredibly powerful because it is a reflection that he is aware that he in real time is recording his legacy. And my question for the audience for this particular slide is who out there has done this in terms of a digital record or something similar? So moving right along to keep this webinar moving. Uh, the fifth member offered their idea, is, their, their idea that legacy is how others will remember as well as CS5. And I think that what this particular member is referring to is you know, that we have a certain amount of control in our lives, um, the cards that we are dealt and how we can respond to those events in our life. But there's also, as we age, we realize there's certain a certain amount of control that we don't have. So my question for the audience with this slide would be, who out there feels others have the power to decide your legacy? And of course, this is very realistic that as much as we would like others to remember us by, they will of course form their own opinions by what resonates with them in their life experience. The sixth member, shared their thoughts that perhaps what we create and give and contribute in our lifetime may not be appreciated, understood, or valued. There's a number of artists throughout history that they were most appreciated after they passed away. And I think that this is an important factor to contribute. Um, but all the same, it does not mean that we don't, do not move forward in what we have to bring. Our ideas, our thought leadership, our knowledge, capital, um, that can help the human race. So this particular member articulated that they have a lot to give, which I think is a wonderful statement to make in knowing their worthiness. And as they move forward, they hope to gain clarity with time and what they are contributing. And I think, again, this is very honest. Some people with legacy, they might be in the middle of their journey and some people, they might be starting out. I think that this conversation around legacy has increased in the last few years, and especially this year, given the pandemic, uh, but it's not a, a conversation that oftentimes happens at the university or you know, at the dining room table per se, but now it's becoming, I think, more, much more of a familiar topic to include amongst ourselves, uh, whether it's this closed community or generally speaking around the, the world. So this uh, seventh member uh, offered their idea, and this might have to do with a memoir, and some of you may consider writing a memoir, or you might have a family member that is in the process of writing a memoir. Uh, they, they wrote to me privately on the Ace My World platform that legacy is what came from the past and we need to look at which events were memorable. Um, this is very interesting because of course, when it comes to writing a memoir, we can choose you know, which events we include or the information we leave out. I think that, um, that creative decision obviously comes with when we choose you know, what we bring forward in then passing on forward to others. So with this slide, I would like to raise the question that um, do you have something from your past that changed your life? 
and it could be negative or positive. And I think at this point, I'd like to opine that, you know, and this again is my vantage point, that we can learn as much from failure as we can from success. So the question for this slide for you to reflect upon is, is if there's, is there something from your past that has changed your life? In the final member feedback, this eighth uh, answer, uh, this individual wrote, we are all part of this world, knowing the history of this world, this planet. And there are many lessons that we can learn throughout history, given the errors of, you know, the many wars and the historic events, uh, the various countries around the, the world and the, you know, the different um, circumstances that, you know, we can definitely learn from whether it's uh, from history books or even just the oral traditions that are passed on, whether it's through our, our countries. Uh, ancestors or even our own personal family members when there are certain, um, you know, lessons that are passed on or even um, sacred literature that is within certain cultures. And I think what this member is articulating is that what he hopes to contribute is to highlight the lessons that he would like this human race to better understand. So we don't end up in, you know, what uh, they say the definition of insanity is, it's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So my question for you on this slide for the audience is, do you think you have learned or what, what do you think you have learned from history? Um, and if there's something, whether it's personal to your family lineage or just overall, maybe particular to your country. Okay, now I'd like to transition uh, from, you know, that let's say there is a statement of, I think my legacy is to, I think our legacy is. And what, so I'm going from me to we or I to we. And so the second part of today's presentation has to do with two case studies. And um, perhaps you have been involved in a community project and, or perhaps you haven't. And if you have, you know, again, please feel free to share it in the chat and the moderator will let me know towards the end. Um, so the first case study has to do with the city of Detroit. And for anyone in North America, they would definitely be familiar with the story of the city of Detroit, but I realize that we have attendees all around the world, 135 attendees, and some of them may not be familiar with this particular city in Detroit. How we, having said that, there will be cities in your country and your, on your continent that are just as large. So one thing that I thought was very interesting when I did the research about the city is that it is the second largest city behind Chicago in the Midwest, but if somebody is not familiar with either the auto industry or the Motown music scene, they may not be familiar with Detroit. So I'm gonna provide a little bit of background. Um, so just as the pandemic this year has, I, I, I might say, demolished certain industries, definitely halted some, we have definitely seen the effects with uh, you know, both hospitality uh, regarding people's willingness to feel safe to travel and stay in hotels, uh, whether luxury or otherwise. Uh, but also with the retail industry, there are a number of stores, whether it's uh, uh, Toronto or Los Angeles, where, you know, it's just retail has definitely been impacted. But if we look at the city of Detroit, it's not the first time that a, uh, a collapse of, or some type of tragedy has faced a city. So for the city of Detroit, I, I believe in the 1950s, their population was between 1.6 to 1.8 million around about. Um, in 2007, what Detroit experienced was not just the credit crunch that the entire globe had gone through, but also the auto industry had left, whether it was a, a due to downsizing or placement of jobs to other locations. So now what happened was the two thirds of the population started to migrate out. And with that, then the blight set in light being the dilapidated homes. And when two thirds of the population left, you, the rainwater, the snow now would impact the properties. So now you have a city that was once a bustling, robust city uh, with the music of Motown and the uh, auto industry with a, 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 just an abundance of jobs. It just was a very fun city at one time. And then in 2013, in this story, the city had to file bankruptcy. Uh, but what was amazing was the residents didn't give up on this city. It was the tenants, the developers, the builders, even the investors. There was one particular investor, and I don't have his name in front of me at this moment, who had invested 1.3 billion into the downtown area. So it was both the downtown area as well as the suburbs that 
uh, found a revitalization, I would say slowly after 2013, maybe closer to 2017 and in the last three years, the city went from a mindset of hopelessness to one of revitalization and rebirth. So at one time, people were afraid to walk around what you can see in this image of the Ford Stadium to now the Ford Stadium is the place to be. And, and companies are coming back into Detroit and um, it is just now a very uh, creative city. You know, artists are coming back. It's really a delightful case study when we think about that it was the people that turned it around. Uh, they did not give up on their city. And what was so amazing also that I, I learned about this is how beautiful the architecture was there. Many of the homes were built after World War I and World War II with stained glass windows, plaster, um, and had been passed down, in fact, from great grandparents and grandparents to then find the residents walking away, uh, the two thirds of the population. And now the residents are coming back uh, uh, because of the number of individuals that are investing in the city, both with their time, their thought leadership, their design, and neighbors really are stepping forward once they see um, how much uh, others have uh, stepped forward. In fact, there was an this old house episode. So what I just want to highlight with this is that it takes leaders with courage to turn the ship around. Uh, so what what's once was a city with blight is now obviously something that is uh, one of the best cities in the United States. So, okay, so moving on uh, is uh, the Tribeca Film Festival. Uh, and again, um, oh, thank you, Nick. Yes, Henry Ford looked at the, the yep, the Wayside Inn. At, okay, thank you, and Sudbury before choosing Detroit. Yeah, I, uh, Detroit is an amazing city. The more research I, I did, uh, the more I realized how, how deep and rich its history was, the buildings there, the specific neighborhoods, and also just the courage of the people. I mean, it, it, again, it is regular people that stepped forward that did not give up. And, and, I, and I highlight these two cities because I think what the pandemic has shown us this year is just that community needs to come together as much as we would like to rely on our political leaders. And it's nothing against any political leader, and I'm not going to be political in this webinar. Um, it is, uh, again, it's the courageous people that step forward with their imagination, their collaboration, and their, um, and their courage, which is definitely what is needed for the leadership in this world. We cannot just rely on politicians. All right, so the second case study has to do with the Tribeca Film Festival. And I would like to give a little bit of credit because I learned about this from uh, Mark Miller, who has the Legacy Lab. Uh, and um, he had highlighted the story about this. This is how I was interested in um, this particular case study. So it, in September 11th, we all know around the world that the Twin Towers fell in New York City. And it was Robert De Niro, who's one of the actors, as well as a number of entrepreneurs around him, they decided that they did not want to leave the city in a state of trauma. Uh, residents were afraid to obviously leave their apartment and their properties and venture out because, you know, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can only imagine what it would be if the towers in Century City in Los Angeles fell. It would uh, definitely be a, uh, you know, it would change one's reality. But Robert De Niro with fellow entrepreneurs came together in these group dinners. And their goal was to bring confidence back to the city. Uh, tourism had fallen and um, they said, you know, what can we do? And their creativity started to come forward in these group dinners. And before you, you knew it, or before they knew it, American Express asked them for their business plan. I think originally they did not think that they were going to start a film festival, but they did. And so they had to bring uh, a business plan to American Express. They then got the funding and the Tribeca Film Festival was born. And again, I'd like to highlight that it is the people coming together with their imagination and their ability to collaborate to take a situation that is tragic, even traumatic, and turn it around so that um, you know, we don't lose hope and we can bring the magic back to our communities, to our towns, and also, uh, you know, in our communities, make it um, enjoyable again. There's so many gifts that come from um, individuals that, you know, when they step into their leadership that they might not realize, for instance, in this uh, uh, case study with Robert De Niro, he may have not said to himself, oh, I am creating my legacy. I, I think he just thought, he was honoring his values, giving something of service to others, and then the blessings came in. So again, it revitalized the Tribeca neighborhood. And today, the Tribeca Film Festival is known for um, attracting filmmakers and 
artists and cinema people all around the world. Uh, but what the birth of it was, was obviously to turn tragedy into something that, or to turn a negative into a positive. And so my question here is, you know, have you ever been involved with a project with your community that may have been as big um, or something that you see, you know, in your own town, in your own country that could definitely use your input? So these two case studies are to bring hope and to inspire you because, um, again, it is the, 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 the leaders that come forward uh, with their ideas that can turn you know, our globe around as well as give hope to the future generations. So I'd like to transition now to the digital worksheet. And I think that Ellen can bring it up in the chat. And um, so I'd like to walk you through the three tips as well as, oh, okay, I think I just see it. Oh, she just po posted into the chat. Um, wonderful. And so let me just go now to the next slide. Okay. So three tips to creating your legacy. Um, so the first tip, and let me see if I can bring up the worksheet as well, so that in real time, worksheet, all right, I guess I'm sharing my screen. All right, okay. So um, this is a digital worksheet. So for you to be able to fill in answers in real time and what I wanted, this worksheet is in three different parts, but what I wanted was to give you a one page handout to both start formulating what you think your legacy could be. And also because um, a number of members expressed to me that they're just beginning to think about their legacy. They may sit on a foundation or on a board, but this, this is not necessarily something that they have clarity in yet. And this is something that this worksheet that you can have, you know, as a part of your morning ritual when you look at your goals or something with your planner or even something that you can share uh, with your close community, whether that is your family or if you do sit on a, a board uh, to think about, you know, what is, you know, it, you know, sometimes in law they say the who, what, when, where, why. And so I think that's where we're starting kind of with the basics of this. So for the foundation, you know, who would you like to impact? In the instance of Detroit and New York City, we could say the, the residents, and obviously you can fill this out too. Um, others that we may want to impact, we could say the next generation. And this just, um, again, allows you to have the clarity of, you know, it's like um, you could pour a bunch of water onto a parking lot or you can get a fire hose and be able to channel your energy. And I think that, that this is what this worksheet is about. So, so again, who, who, who do you want to impact? And if you would like to drop anything into the chat, feel free to. Um, all right, so the next question is, what do you value? And um, what I mean by this could be, and some people might know how to drill down for their values. If you have a coach, you know, that's wonderful or someone in your support network that can bring it out of you. Um, it, let's say, I'm just gonna offer mine. I've got uh, three core values around justice, beauty, and let's say organization. For you, uh, it, your values might be different. Maybe your values could be family or truth or um, so when you can narrow it down to three core values, it, it, it also aligns you uh, or it affords you the opportunity to align, you know, your daily actions with those values. It's not just, you know, what you do, but also who you be. So, you know, how often, let's say, if beauty is one of my core values, let's say, how often do I make sure that I create beauty in this world, and whether it's by visual, the spoken word, and so forth. So the third question is, and let me make this a full screen again. Okay. Okay, so why does this matter? And I think the why question is what fuels us forward. You know, maybe it is to make sure that the next generations are guided. Um, because for anyone that's dealt with succession, if you hand over something that is heavy and significant to the next generation, 
and they are not ready for it, it's like a bowling ball, they can just drop it on the ground. And so if they, if you can kind of fill out more of the context, then it becomes much more meaningful um, as to why this is important. And it's not then just about earning profits for a family business or, you know, about the money, please like preserve the wealth within the portfolio. But, you know, again, why does this matter? And so I can volunteer, for instance, my, one of my life mission statements is to turn ugliness into beauty. And that just doesn't have to be with architecture or interior design. It can also do with if somebody is stuck in their life, uh, making sure that they become unstuck so that they can move forward because we are the most happy. And so I could use happiness as kind of a synonym for beauty. Uh, we're the most happy when we are growing, when we're developing compared to when we are stuck in what I call the loop around the airport another year. And I think that this year definitely has um, shown us what Groundhog Day can be like unless we are proactive in our daily schedule to be able to pull out of that. So for anyone who, know, who has been stuck, they understand the pain of being stuck. So, you know, why does your legacy matter to you? And again, this answer will be very personal to you regarding the reasons uh, that drive you and that drive your objectives. So the fourth one is, you know, what would you like to pass on? Um, is it a story? Is it a digital record? Uh, or is it your knowledge? Um, I think there's much knowledge that we need to add um, that isn't covered necessarily in the school books when we're growing up, uh, not necessarily covered in universities. And I think that these conversations are very important to have. If we can record them on a podcast, that's wonderful. So the fourth question is, you know, what would you like to pass on? Um, so I'll, I can write here a digital record of knowledge. But it might also be values, like the um, second member slide, when that gentleman talked about the value of kindness. He wants his son to remember the kindness of his mother, just as he credits his grandparents with, you know, what they brought into his life. So it can be something that's abstract as well as something that is, you know, concrete. Okay, so the next part is the big picture. Now, while many of us might not want to think about our obituary. It is a dose of reality, and I can make a joke here that, you know, Abraham Lincoln did not have a lot of control with his outcome, um, but, you know, who, who, who of us does? You know, we can think that we are invincible or, you know, there's also some humor about, you know, if you make a plan, God laughs. So I, I think what I would like to highlight regarding the second part regarding the big picture is what I would like you to remember from this webinar is your legacy matters. You know, whether, you know, how small or how big it is, um, you know, this, the, the most insignificant details that you think are insignificant could impact and influence somebody else's life and what they think is possible and what they will, um, you know, we oftentimes do not realize how much of a role model we are to others, the way that we conduct ourselves, the way that we look at other people, the way that we speak, all of this gets absorbed into our human experience. And so, um, I'd like to say your legacy matters, no matter how big or how small. And um, I'd also like to emphasize here that, um, you know, your identity is also more than that of a consumer. So just as this, the idea I'd like to defend in this webinar is that you are more than your money. Um, you know, what would you like, you know, if there's, a, you know, whether it's the tombstone or the eulogy, you know, what would you like it to say? Uh, how would you like it to be remembered as proactively as you can in this lifetime? Obviously, you can't control the things you cannot control. Um, but just, um, you know, what, um, you know, what words would you give it? What, what language would you give to your obituary now that you have the uh, power to decide that you're in good health? Um, yes. Okay. So uh, the, a couple other questions around this is, you know, what legacy, you know, will you leave behind? And also, you know, did you step into your worthiness? From coaching individuals this last five years, I've learned that the number one thing that holds someone back from achieving their legacy is limiting beliefs. The bottom line is they just feel as if they're not worth it. So that's why I'd like to emphasize again, your legacy matters. And, and the last question around the big picture is, did you honor your values even when it was outside your comfort zone? So, it's always easy to go along to get along, but we definitely know when we are tested and tested in our mettle, when we are challenged and we have to step in and step forward, 
again, I don't think that uh, when, you know, in the case studies of Detroit, Michigan or lower Manhattan with the Tribeca Film Festival, you know, did those individuals definitely, you know, did they realize that they would be, you know, being a leader or were they just stepping up because they looked around and they said, no one else is stepping up right now. So obviously their, their actions mattered because it's turned a, a big ship around. And the last uh, portion here, um, you might be asking the question of, you know, why is the arrow going backwards? And it is, I looked at this uh, with a couple of uh, associates and it, it has to do with thinking about it from an engineering standpoint. If we begin with the end in mind, you know, where do we start today in working backwards, whether it's a one, five or 10 year plan, depending on how much time we have. And, and so my first question is, where are you in your legacy? You could say, I'm at the beginning, it is conceptual to me, or you know, one could say I am in the middle um, and I am pivoting given the events of this year. Um, and I also find it so interesting if you know the, the backstory to a charity called Charity Water, the founder of that organization didn't think that he would be li living or leaving the legacy that he is. He originally started as a nightclub promoter in New York City. Uh, different events happened in his life and he felt called to do something different. And now I believe his organization raises donations around 230 million, something uh, in that ballpark. So it definitely uh, is leaving an impact on this world. So again, the question is, where are you in your legacy? And um, second, who will continue your legacy? And, and at this point, I'd like to go back to the slide presentation and make it a full screen again. Okay, so we went through tip number one. Oh, yep, to look around you um, and to see where you're at um, in reading your landscape. And so I gave, you, I gave you two positive case studies and now I'd like to bring some bad news. So does it work out for every, every company or every individual? Of course it doesn't. And so I'd like to protect you right now in informing you regarding some blind spots of brands that did not make it, uh, companies that did not take action when they could have. And the first example has to do with a, an American company called Sears Roebuck, Sears Roebuck. They were founded in 1903 and they had a mail order process already in place. Um, did they follow up with it? They clearly didn't. The company is, um, you know, it's not something that is, a, uh, that is a mover and a shaker today, but one company we do know about when it comes to mail order is amazon.com or even eBay. So Sears Robux had the systems and the process in place. They were a well-known department store in the 70s and the 80s uh, to my parents' generation, but to my generation or to the next generation, uh, they are not well known. They have been a bit left in the dust. Uh, a second brand um, that I could bring up is um, Radio Shack. They were once very well known. Now they're a specialty store that's been wiped out. A third example would be Kodak. Uh, as much as we love how port, um, the Polaroids look, if you remember from the 70s and 80s again, Kodak at one time you know, could have had the whole entire global market and then with smartphones, um, they, uh, they lost out. They, um, they had every single opportunity. And yet, how often do we bring up Kodak in our conversations compared to talking about a company such as um, Apple and looking at you know, the original founder of Apple as a, as a role model um, in the business world because he was willing to better read his landscape, take those calculated risks and take chances as a courageous leader. A couple other examples could be um, how Tesla and their electric cars have impacted Lexus um, or even an American department store known as Toys R Us was wiped out by big box discount uh, retailer stores. So there may be a brand in your country that you can look to of you know, a, a company that once was around doing very well and yet you know, their legacy is no more. So again, it takes more than money to leave a sustaining legacy. Here's the second tip that I find to be incredibly important in what I've learned in the last five years of coaching individuals in over 10 countries. It's the value of patience, the ability to wait uh, for the right time and to know when your key people are in place. And um, as a leader, you will have to instill patience 
so as to have your team as well as yourself to see the long game. Um, Because success does not always happen overnight. In fact, there is a joke about, you know, I became, uh, it only took me, uh, you know, 10 years to become an overnight success um, because it does take time. And so as we assemble the right team around us and we know our trusted relationships, we can also know when the right time is to open the right doors. And I, I bring up this patience piece, especially when it comes to politics and not politics per se in the global or the national landscape, but for anyone who has been in a family business, many times you cannot just blurt out across a boardroom table that you don't like the ideas of someone else or that you don't even like the person and you don't understand why they have that position and they've been granted that position. Uh, in order to maintain harmony within that group or within that company. Um, so I think that the uh, value of patience is key in creating your legacy and developing it because what we see today can be vastly different four years from now or even four years ago. So I think it's, again, having that long game or seeing the long game and having that vision to see things from the Eagles perspective. And the third tip in creating your legacy, um, as I wrap up in the next uh, three minutes before the Q&A section, is uh, it is to act. Um, It is wonderful to collect knowledge. There's many intellectuals that love to collect books and collect thoughts and read articles. But what others really need today is your applied ideas. And that is definitely worth more than your money because again, the idea that I'm defending today is you are more than your money. And with actions, there are results. Um, One hurdle to be aware of is people get lost in the details. They get lost in the minutia. So with the worksheet that I provided today, I hope that you will fill it out, print it out and place it somewhere, whether it is your home office or in your daily planner for, you know, as we finish out this year or for your daily planner for 2021. Um, And just to remind you again, success is showing up. It's um, much easier to not show up and it is definitely a different skill set to show up than it is just to think about great ideas. But the world today needs your ideas. And um, I think more than ever, there is a community that can be your support network, whether it is a small world or your friends and your social circle where you are at, including your family, that can be your support network to motivate you. And of course, if you'd like to add to that, there are coaches available all around the world, as well as advisors to add to just, you know, your team, let's say if a part of your team is your attorney and your CPA, your financial advisor, to also consider a coach. Um, And again, it can be someone within your network in your country that is a resource to you today. So um, we we talked about the digital worksheet and uh, a thought with that, I'd like to emphasize, you know, please leave sufficient and clear instructions because one day when you're not here, if you would like your legacy to be carried on, uh, those instructions need to be clear so others can understand what you wanted, what you meant, what you valued, what your core values were. Uh, All right. And uh, regarding the obituary, it's, you know, how would you like to be remembered? Will you be a bridge builder or an observer? Will you build it or will you watch it being built? And most importantly, you are worthy of your legacy. A couple other uh, thoughts uh, that I wanted to offer and extend is to, you know, when you define your values, bring it both to what you do as well as who you be or who you are in your identity because we are more than our work. As uh, many people say when they're close to, to death, you know, I didn't need to spend more hours at the office. What I needed to do was enjoy my life more. And I think what they're speaking to is who we are, who we be, uh, you know, the, 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 the you know, developing our identity outside of, you know, our, our professionalism, whether that's our portfolio, or our net worth, it's, you know, another type of skill set when it comes to being happy. Okay. Uh, second is to connect with uh, diverse people. It's very easy to stay within our comfort zone. Um, I challenge you uh, this upcoming year to connect with people that you may not ever talk to for the, diverse, the diversity of ideas that they can bring, and also to commit yourself to a project that will live beyond you. I think many times if we don't have uh, a project and yet we have wealth, it's very easy to enjoy the pleasures of this world and that's fine, uh, but those pleasures can also sometimes become distractions. I think when we commit to something more meaningful than ourselves, it not only gives more quality to our life, but obviously we can give something uh, to future generations. So make sure 
in closing thoughts, your story and contribution are recorded. And um, what we are blessed with, and we are so fortunate today, is we have access to the support to, that we need to define, develop, and execute our legacy. And I am going to finish out with this idea. And it is um, the historic definition of legacy. And, and the historic definition gets a little complicated in the sense that if we were a part of a royal family or um, we were a part of their entourage, then we would be afforded the luxury of having a legacy. But I think today we do not have to be a diplomat nor a secretary of state. We don't have to be Michael Pompeo. And yet um, today with the many tools and resources at our fingertips with technology, no matter where we are in this world, I think that the landscape is much more horizontal uh, when we have that courage within us to step forward in our leadership. So this has to do, uh, you can read it later uh, if you'd like, uh, this webinar is being recorded. And it's a fascinating history when it comes to the definition of legacy. And, and I uh, joked with the coordinator for A Small World that even the A Small World community can come together jointly and place their name on something collectively. So with that, I will see if Elin has any um, questions or comments. And let me see if I can um, stop share for one second and see if there's any uh, chat messages or questions. I know that a lot of people reached out privately to me because sometimes it's a, a bit of a, you know, people can feel, feel vulnerable when expressing their thoughts about legacy because it's so personal. Um, and if there aren't any questions, then I can finish out this webinar with the last seven slides of members and how they view their legacy as well as what they would personally like to contribute. So, um, okay, I, I don't see anything yet from Elin. So I will just transition back over to sharing the last seven slides from members. All right. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, someone also shared, I'm pretty sure my friend's company Acumen had a big deal in Detroit recently. That's great. Yeah, they, uh, the number of companies now moving to Detroit, it's uh, pretty amazing uh, given its history. So let me also go back to these slides. All right, so this one um, I think is just fascinating because it, it brings to light the impact that our pets have on us and animals. So, you know, we can find meaning from animals in addition to just people. And this member articulated that legacy for them means something, leaving something which their family can use to make their lives better and which they can also use to make the world a better place. And for this particular member, they are a dog coach. And um, some of us might be familiar with Caesar Milan. He was known as the dog whisperer. And he had a genius zone, a gift in helping dog owners with their pets. Um, and so similarly with this A small member in the genius that is available within this community, um, this lady specializes in nervous and rehomed um, dogs. And um, I know a number of associates that have expressed to me how much the commercials that they see, whether it's on the television or on the internet, how much they are touched regarding um, the impact that our canine friends have on us. You know, I think they call it man's best friend and for good reason. So it's not just the people, uh, but I, I'd also say, you know, the animal kingdom also gets a little bit of recognition. Um, so another member to round out this webinar, they had shared that at a global level, it means the transmission of culture and values within and outside my community of origin. At a personal level, it is my gift for the future generations in terms of actions and inspiration. Um, and I do think that when we have this desire, we can call it intent or as well as intention, um, it will survive beyond our life. In fact, I wrote an article that talked about, you know, your legacy lives beyond you. Um, and I love how this member talks about that they have already succeeded in inspiring some people, but they would like to inspire more. And my question for the audience today is, um, have you ever inspired anyone? And if so, you know, who was it? Um, and again, you can place this in the chat or add this to your own notes or on the worksheet. Um, the 11th member uh, sent me a private message and they 
shared that legacy for them, you know, could be one thing or it could be many things. It could be a set of values again that we can pass on such as kindness, or it can be an achievement, an art collection, um, our research. Perhaps, you know, it could be, you know, related to medical research or cancer research. Um, it could be a, a company that we pass forward. For instance, many family businesses will, um, you know, their legacy may be uh, to pass on that business to the next generation and uh, to understand how can it survive. Um, yep. And so in, the, in other community organizations, which is very interesting because in the past, we oftentimes thought of legacy, like whether it was the Rockefeller Foundation or the Carnegie Foundation, when somebody put their name on something, and I think there is something in the chat, and I'm still learning how to use Zoom. So, um, all right, so, okay, great, great. All right, I don't know if everyone can see that. So let me just go back to sharing the full screen. Yep, I think that it's um, sharing who we are and um, whether it is the smallest thing or the biggest uh, contribution. And it, and it doesn't just have to be, you know, putting our name on a stadium or a museum or a library. I think it's also, you know, who we are even within our family and making that consistent and congruent, you know, who we are as a, you know, in the workplace, who we are as a parent, who we are as a spouse and making that consistent in our values so we don't change it because definitely there are younger eyes looking up and uh, looking at us um, has, you know, in who we are as role models. So what I love about this is the idea that it does not have to be one thing, given the talent within this community, it can be many things. And um, okay, and I will move to the slide number uh, 12 for this member feedback. And Oh, and they shared, I think uh, Cloisters of the Met is the most memorable legacy I've experienced. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, okay, so this member shared um, that they sit on a board um, and they have seen family foundations created. And I also love the, the different um, access different members have when it comes to their legacy. And they would definitely like to help the younger family members carry on the vision. Uh, so definitely patience and the tip of patience is essential for this. And with this slide, um, I, I'd like to bring up the question of, you know, what expectations might parents have for their children, you know, and how can this, you know, um, be received in today's modern society? Will it be carried on? I think expectations is sometimes talked about and sometimes it can be a heavy pressure put on the next generation as they find their way. And um, the 13th member uh, chatted and I thought this was so bold um, because many times when we do accept our legacy, um, it can be something we may or may not be ready for, and we might search for the guides that can help us in that journey, in what I call the hero's journey. Um, and so there is that emotional part, and it's not always just about the money or the legalities of it. It's also being ready, um, you know, for the idea of a legacy, you know, does it bring you anxiety? Does it bring you worry? Um, and who can you share when it comes to that? Um, and also, I, I'd like to bring up the question of how big does a legacy have to be? Many times, um, our ego will play a part, and there is a positive as well as a negative side to our ego. But if our ego uh, becomes a problem, we also need to realize that. Um, and, and ego definitely does play a part with our legacies, um, especially when there is money involved or family expectations. So uh, the fourth uh, or the 14th member, uh, they shared their personal experience regarding helping, you know, the rest of their continent. And I appreciated the vision that they have to um, educate. I, I've seen definitely a theme around education with many of the responses that were sent privately. Um, and also, I think that this highlights many times people who are not recognized enough, you know, who helps you, whether they are a member of your family or outside of your family, you know, who could have more recognition because um, there's many supporting members that often are not um, given the accolades that maybe they could publicly or privately receive, you know, through your spoken word or even publicly. And I think also the question that I would have for the audience for this slide is, um, you know, is learned helplessness something you have thought about or run into? So is learned helplessness something you have 
um, thought about or run into in your life with others. All right. And the last slide that a member offered in their feedback, um, they shared a project that they're working on in India in schools that they are um, creating. And I, the question that I would have for the audience today is, who is a teacher here and how important are different types of education? So who is a teacher here and how important are different types of education? Um, and I can read the slide. Uh, this gentleman wrote, my mission is to do only projects that impact lives directly. One of these projects is a school I run in India. Today we have 150 children and uh, provided I can carry on funding and raise money, uh, my mission is to expand this to 1,000 children and then turn it into a self-sustaining model. And I hope to replicate this in other parts of India as well as Africa. This is what I hope my legacy to be. Um, and then last but not least, I would like to share the final slide. And, and it is for you to remember that you are more than your money. You are more than your money. So I would like to thank everyone today for joining. I appreciated your comments in the chat, as well as your messages to me privately. Um, I did not get to include every private message uh, due to timing and creation of these slides, uh, but I'm, I will definitely respond uh, in the future privately. If you would like to reach out to me, please visit uh, my website or social media. I appreciate your time again. And I I'd just like to emphasize that nothing good happens or gets done you know, until you take action and we have more access today to a support network. So thank you so much for joining and you are more than your money.